Hi everyone, in this video we're going to find the curvature, so let's go ahead and work through it. So there's two ways to do it. So solution one requires that you look at this and you recognize that the graph of this vector valued function is actually a circle of radius 8, so r is equal to 8, and therefore the curvature k is given by the formula 1 over r. So in this case it would be 1 over 8. So again, this requires that you can just look at this and know it's a circle. So how do you know it's a circle? Well, let me go ahead and show you. Check this out. So if you call this piece here x, and you call this piece here y, you could think of this as x equals 8 cosine of 4t. And then you could think of this as y equals 8 sine 4t. Now you solve each of them for the trig functions. So that'll give you cosine of 4t is equal to x over 8. Likewise, sine of 4t is equal to y over 8. Then you use the fact that cosine squared 4t plus sine squared 4t is equal to 1. Then notice that cosine is x over 8, so when you square it, you simply get x squared over 64. And sine is y over 8, so when you square it, you get y squared over 64. And that's equal to 1. Multiplying by 64, going kind of fast, uh, you would get this. And so this is a circle of radius uh, square root of 64, which is 8, centered at the origin. So it's not necessary to, to do all this. I mean, if you can just look at it and know it's a circle, boom, go for it. You know, it's a solid answer. Uh, no problems there. Solution 2 uh, requires more work. Let's go ahead and go through that. Solution 2 is to use uh, one of the curvature formulas. So a common curvature formula that you can use is the following. So it's the derivative of the unit tangent vector divided by the derivative of the vector valued function. And rather, you take the magnitude of both of those. So you take the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent vector. It's a lot to say. And then on the bottom, you take the magnitude of the derivative of your vector valued function. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and, and go through it. Why not? So I guess we'll start by taking the derivative of r. And you know, before I do that, I'm going to rewrite r in component form just to make things look better. So 8 cosine 4t and then 8 sine of 4t. It just looks a little bit cleaner. All right, so the derivative of a cosine is negative sine, so we're going to get a negative sine here, but we're also going to get a 4 from the chain rule. So it's going to be it's going to be negative 32 sine of 4t. Then over here, it'll be cosine of 4t times 4. So 4 times 8 is 32, so it'll be 32 cosine 4t. Again, the 4 comes from the derivative of the inside. It gets multiplied by the 8 and gives you uh, 32. We need the magnitude of this, so the magnitude of r prime of t. This is equal to the square root, and you basically just square each of the components. So you'll get negative 32 sine of 4t squared plus 32 cosine of 4t squared. So you square each piece, so you end up getting 32 squared, like this. And you can pull it out, so you're left with sine squared of 4t plus cosine squared of 4t. This piece here is going to be 1, it's a trig identity, so you just get the square root of 32 squared times 1, so you just get 32. All right, so the bottom piece is going to be 32. We know that. That's going to be a 32. We need to figure out t, though. So t 
of t. It's a lot of work to do it this way. <laughs> uh, basically, to figure out t, the formula is r prime of t over the magnitude of r prime of t. This is the formula for t. So we're taking our derivative here, and we're dividing it by 32, basically. So that's going to put us at this negative sine 4t, and then cosine 4t. This is much harder <laughs> than the previous solution. It's okay, though. We, we got this. And now we got to take the derivative. So the derivative uh, requires a chain rule again. So it'll be negative cosine 4t times 4. So I'm going to put the 4 out front. So cosine 4t. The derivative of sine 4t is cosine 4t. And then you multiply by, by 4. Same thing here, except it'll be negative 4 sine 4t. And then we take the magnitude of this. So the magnitude of this thing. It's going to be 4. If you kind of see how, how the other ones work, you know, it's the same thing. You take the square root and, you know, you square each of the components like this. Then you do this one as well, negative 4 sine 4t. And then so you just get 16, and you can pull out the 16, so you get 16. And you, you could skip all this work if it's clear. I mean, um, it's pretty clear. So this is 16 times 1, so you just get this word of 16, so you get 4. Okay. So k, what is k? Let's go back up. So it's going to be the magnitude of the derivative, which we know is 4. Okay, so that goes up top. Moment of truth. <laughs> and the bottom is the magnitude of the derivative of r, so that's 32. Oh, look at that. It's also 1 over 8. Oh, yes, yes. It would have been really bad, you know, if we worked through this other solution, which I, sh I, I kind of regret doing it, but I'm glad I did it. Um, and we would have gotten a different answer. That would have mean there was a mistake here. So uh, obviously solution 1 is the way to go. So uh, just keep in mind, if you see something like this and you can recognize that it's a circle, go for it. Basically, when you have a cosine and a sine, and these numbers are always the same, like 7 and 7, 2 and 2, 8 and 8, it's going to be a circle. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.